parallelograms in the coordinate plane, and we're going to prove opposite angles congruent. This is 6.2b. We have five previous videos that are in the geometry playlist for this chapter. When we draw a parallelogram in the coordinate plane, the name of the parallelogram is given by the consecutive order of the vertices. It doesn't matter where we start. This could be clockwise A, B, C, D, or we could say B, C, D, A, or C, D, B, A, as long as we consecutively go in that direction. We can also go counterclockwise and say it's D, C, B, A, or C, B, A, D, okay? We have three vertices of parallelogram A, B, C, D, our A is at 1, negative 2, B is at negative 2, 3, and D is at 5, negative 1. We need to find the coordinates of vertex C. So it's missing here, isn't it? And we know it's a parallelogram, so it should be kind of box-shaped, right? Well, since ABCD is a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides must be parallel. That's according to the definition. We graph the given points, and we get this. And then we find the slope from B to A by counting the units down 5 and right 3. So the points go from left to right. So B is farther to the left, so it's first. That's going to be our X sub 1, Y sub 1. And we count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's a negative 5. And then we count over to the right 3. 1, 2, 3. So our rise is a negative 5 and our run is a 3 to get to point A. Okay? And we find point C by going the opposite direction. We went right 3, so now we're going to go left 3, 1, 2, 3. And we went down 5, now we're going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that puts point C at 2 for X and 4 for Y. And we connect the points to make parallelogram A, B, C, D. And we can verify the slope for B, C and AD by using the slope formula. We put in our ordered pairs and B is farther to the left, so that's X sub 1, Y sub 1, that's X sub 2, Y sub 2. Same with the A and the D. We put it in the slope formula and we find that this slope is a positive 1 fourth and this slope is also a positive 1 fourth. This verifies the coordinates of vertex C are 2 for X and 4 for Y because parallel lines have the same slope. Using properties of parallelograms in a proof, we can write a two-column proof. And for theorem 6.2.2 that said the opposite angles will be congruent. So if you remember from the previous video, 6.2a, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. So it's given that ABCD is a parallelogram. We need to prove that angle BAD, this one right here, is congruent to DBC. DCB, this one right here. We also need to prove that this angle, ABC, is congruent to this angle, CDA. We have our two-column proof with statements and reasons. And let me back up so you can see the drawing a little bit. So ABCD is a parallelogram. Well, that was given. And segment AB is congruent to segment CD, and segment DA is congruent to segment BC. Well, that's because the opposite sides are congruent. That's from our first theorem from the last video. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. Okay? Then we have segment BD is congruent to segment BD. So this diagonal is a hypotenuse for this triangle. It's also the hypotenuse for this triangle. And that's the reflexive property of congruence. They share that hypotenuse, so they're congruent. Number four says triangle BAD is congruent to triangle DCB. Well, that's from side, side, side from steps two and three. We have a side, side, and a side. Number five says angle BAD is congruent to angle DCB, and our reason is CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. It's got three congruent sides, so they're congruent. Now let's do the other one. We've got AC is congruent to AC. Now we've got this diagonal, and it's a hypotenuse for this triangle, and it's a hypotenuse for this triangle. And that's the reflexive property of congruence because it shares a hypotenuse. Number seven says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA, and that's from side, side, side from steps two and six. 
We have a side, a side, and a side, which brings us to number eight, that ABC is congruent to angle CDA because of CPCTC. We have three congruent sides, so the congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay? Let's do one more short one. This is for 6.2.2 that said opposite angles are congruent. That was this one here. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. So it's given that GHJN and JKLM are parallelograms, and HM are collinear. Remember, collinear means they're laying on the same line. NK are collinear. They're on the same line. We need to prove that angle G is congruent to angle L, these opposite ones, okay? So we have a very short little proof. We've got GHJN and JKLM are parallelograms. Well, that was given, okay? Number two says angle HJN, HJN, this one right here, is congruent to angle G, this one here. And MJK, this one here, is congruent to angle L, this one here, because of our second theorem that the opposite angles are congruent. That's going to be congruent, and these are going to be congruent. Number three says angle HJN, this one right here, is congruent to MJK, this one right here. And that's from the vertical angles theorem. They're vertical angles. So they're congruent. Which brings us to number four, that angle G is congruent to angle L because of the transitive property of congruence. And remember that transitive property says if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, well then A is equal to C. They're all equal to each other, right? And we had that this HJN was congruent to G, that MJK was congruent to L, and that these two were congruent to each other, which means these two are congruent to each other. See? So remember, by definition and the four theorems we did in 6.2a, the video before this, we have these five properties of parallelograms, and you should probably write them down, that opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, you know, the legal 180 degrees, and diagonals bisect each other, okay? Next video, conditions for parallelograms theorems. 6.3a, which will do the second part of 6.3 as b for proving parallelograms in the coordinate plane, okay? So I hope these proofs made sense to you, and I know geometry has a lot of proofs, and when you mark down your theorems in a theorem notebook, it's easier to do the proofs, especially if next to the theorem you've got little notes that or diagrams that help you explain what they mean so you can go to them quickly, okay? I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me. Keep up the good work. Bye.